Who comes to your mind, when you think of a serial killer, Charles Sobranch, the bikini killer, who would charm beautiful young women only to later kill them? The merciless Jack, the Ripper, whose identity is yet to be confirmed. Charles Manson, who managed a number of followers who were willing to support and kill for him. Or Ted Bundy, who would sexually assault, kill and decapitate his victims before keeping their severed heads in his apartment as trophies. J.V. Dick Barlow Mugg, the murderer of hundred innocent children, who sodomized hundred boy and cut their body into small pieces and dissolve in hydrochloric acid. These stories still do give a chill every time we hear about these merciless killers, who enjoyed the screams of innocent victims, and went barbarian in killing several lives. As terrifying as these maniacs might sound, they still don't make the cut for the world's worst. That title would be reserved for an Indian, who spread terror in the 80s. The world's most feared serial killer was an Indian, and he killed over 900 people, in cold blood. The terrifying thugs of India, that would put any of today's gangs to shame. He was none other than, Thug Bihuram. Bihuram was born in 1765 in a village in the vicinity of Jubalpur, in today's Madhya Pradesh. Bihram is said to have been a relatively normal young man, remembered as someone who was very quiet and contemplative as a youth. Normal, that is, before he met and befriended Sidamir Ali. Ali introduced him to a world he had previously never encountered, filled with powerful men who were feared in all the neighboring villages. It was around this time that the Mughal Empire, at this point under the rule of Shalam II, had ceased to be a real force, with Alam himself merely playing the role of a nominal monarch, and the East India Company running roughshod over the Kingdom of Delhi. Bihram initially teamed up with a prostitute who is only referred to as Dolly, who is said to have been the daughter of a British soldier and a woman from Gwalia. Bihram and Dolly worked the British soldiers and rich Indians, who would show up at Dolly's for what they thought was fun and frolic and end up dead. In the early 80s Thug Bihram's name was being whispered in fear. People would avoid routes if news got around that Thug Bihram was on the prowl. Many knew someone who had gone missing on the roads in the darkest hours of the night. No one knew for sure what had happened to them. That fear drove travelers to stick together, seeking what safety they could find in numbers. But this was exactly what the thugs wanted. Thugs like Bihram gathered in small groups by the side of the road, waiting for travelers to pass by. When they did, the thugs told them that they were traveling merchants or performers themselves, and asked to join them. After all, there was safety in numbers. The thugs then followed along with their victims, sometimes for days or even months, slowly gaining their trust. Often, other groups of thugs would join the party along the way. When the thugs felt the odds were in their favor, they would strike. Thug Bihuram would walk into villages, and walk out with supplies and someone's daughter, and nobody would have the courage to challenge him or his men. From 1790, literally thousands of people kept disappearing. Things got so bad that investigators were sent down from England to locate the source of the disappearances. While the team of five detectives were all killed, they had been able to report back to then Governor General, Francis Rawdon Hastings, the name of Thug Bihram. Nothing else was known, just that one name. Entire convoys of traders, complete with British guards, would disappear without a trace and would eventually be found as piles of skeletons a few months or years later. Bihram would generally choose the role of an infiltrator. He would join up with a group of travelers and pretend to be a trader. The thuggies had developed their own form of sign language that was referred to as Romasina. He used a rumal which is nothing but a handkerchief to strangle his victims. The rumal had a special coin sewed in the center and it helped him strangle his victims easily by blocking the Adam's apple and choking his victims to death. 
but by the early 1830s the golden age of the thugs was crashing to an end. The British, who had colonized India, now turned their attention to the group under Superintendent William Henry Sleeman. Captain William Sleeman was assigned the responsibility of capturing Bahram and investigating thuggy operations in 1828. It took him over 11 years and nearly cost him his life on three separate occasions, before he finally succeeded in capturing a 75-year-old thug Bihram in 1839. He had captured Bihram by first capturing his lieutenant, Sidamir Ali, known in the countryside as, Firanga. Firanga was tortured and eventually persuaded to turn king's evidence. He took Saleeman to many of the, graves, the thuggies had used. In all, the British found the skeletons or corpses of around 500,000 people. Firanga then helped the British locate and capture Biharam. Unsurprisingly, Thug Biharam had been with a woman when Saleeman and his men broke in on him. The most notorious among them was their leader, Thug Biharam the King of Thugs. One of the most prolific in the history of mankind, he was responsible for murders of an estimated 931 people. A worshipper of the goddess of death, Kali, the thugs looked at the killing of innocents as their religious duty. They believed their killings would be gratified by Kali herself. In fact, none of the murders were for money or pleasure, but in the name of religion. He was hanged in private, though his corpse was shown to the public. He was hanged in private in 1839. A worshipper of the goddess of death. Kali, the thugs looked at the killing of innocents as their religious duty. They believed their killings would be gratified by Kali herself. In fact, none of the murders were for money or pleasure, but in the name of religion. This was a blind faith of a worshipper, which took lives of about 1,000 people. The lesson from the story is, differentiate between faith and blind faith. Kindly don't forget to subscribe and like our channel for more videos. Thank you for watching this video.